morning. were asked to describe a shirt to somebody. The Bible uses a lot of different figures to speak to describe the shirt. I thought I'd like us to talk about the fact that he's describing the body. Best part of my motive was I was asking someone this. Well, Lord, not asking because it was a week ago. My mind. They wanted me to speak on the idea that every member has a responsibility. That was the key to the place of the day. That lecture, and I got to thinking about that. It's kind of hard to go through this all the things that we're supposed to do. But then it dawned on me. Oh, talk about the church as a body. Think about your body. What's the most important part? Now, if you've got one, tell me later. But my answer typically would be, uh, I like it all. I think it's all pretty important. Right? The head, of course, is necessary because it controls everything else that takes place. You know, when I go to raise this hand up, my brain has to tell my arm, go ahead and raise up. So the head's pretty important, but the nervous system that connects the head to all the rest of these nerves in the body, if that's not functioning properly, no matter what the brain wants, it's just not going to work right. You probably have seen people, maybe know people, perhaps you have a little problem with that where things just don't work quite like they're supposed to. Um, I went to school with some people that had things where I think children in years uh, suffer from various ailments where the body just doesn't function quite properly. Of course, my right hand is pretty important because I'm right handed, so I just make everything on my right hand. I'm going to drink this water with my right hand. That's why I pick up the Bible. It's probably going to be with my right hand. If I need to scratch my head, I'm going to use my right hand. Of course, later on, I plan to sit down. I tried using this one, it doesn't work as well. I'm not going to have any problem with it. But my right hand is very important. But the left hand is kind of important too. So when you think about your body, it's made up of. I started to say we saw in the scripture. We didn't have a scripture. Turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter. going to start reading in verse 19, which I understand is in the middle of the sentence, but it's going to make sense for what we're trying to talk about this morning. And not holding fast to the head from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. So this body is made up of a lot of different members, but the head is what takes control over all of them. If you look at Ephesians chapter 4, go ahead and Go back to page 2 to Ephesians 4. Paul writes in verse 15, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in, in all things to him who is the head, Christ, and from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working 
by which every part does its part, its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So every member of the body has an important function or function. Everybody. Now, this is something a lot of people probably don't think about. When we study the church as a body, and every member has something to contribute, sometimes we have people trying to contribute things that they probably should not. Think about your body. Does every part do the same thing? No. I'm going to give you an I'm going to suggest to you this morning that it's impossible to scratch your head We had some teenagers in here today, probably. You know, could you do it? You can't get your elbow turned around, right? This, this won't work right. Well, what's it for? It only does one thing. As far as I can tell, it allows that arm, that forearm, to come up and go back. Up and back. Now, you might think, well, it, no, it's not the elbow that causes it to turn over. All that elbow does, one function, one thing. How important is it? Would you care if it got locked up like that? Well, it wouldn't be as bad if, if my left arm wasn't quite as bad. But I'm right-handed. I told you this one doesn't help me very well. It doesn't, you know, it just doesn't paint right. I can't eat. If that thing's locked like that. And if it's locked like this, well, I can get to my mouth okay, but you know, to get to the food, I'm going to. One function, well, actually it does have a second function. I used to preach to a congregation with a couple, a couple of young men in the congregation were married. They'd like to go fishing on Saturday. So every once in a while I'd notice the wife doing this and then they start fishing. It does work for that too, for clarification. That's the way God designed Maybe he designed it for that too, I don't know. I don't know if he did for this. But how important is that? How many things do you do with your arm where they need to get you bend that elbow? You pick things up? Like you come with little children, you ever pick up a child? You pick them up and they up with That's pretty important. So I've got the whole, I had four come through the house, I got to pick them all up, hold them very tight. I don't quite like it. Except grandchildren and hold. I haven't seen them do that yet. So every member has some function, some responsibility, some work that they can do for the Lord. Although in some times, some cases, people don't think they can. A lady in the congregation where I obeyed the gospel once told me before I left to go to school, I'm no good to God. Believe me. Love God. Love the church. But she thought she was a burden. She felt that way because she had grown weak. She couldn't really go to the grocery store any longer, push the cart, and buy her groceries. Nobody wanted to buy groceries in front of her. Sometimes she had to to walk through the door. Sometimes she had to. She couldn't clean her house any longer. She didn't have stamina to do it. You know, she could dust it from here and there. Um, she couldn't do much else. People had to pick her up and take her to church when she felt good enough to do it. So she thought that she'd become a burden. She wasn't. Do you remember what Paul said to Titus about the older that they're supposed to be? That they may teach the younger women to love their husbands, love their When's the best time to teach a young woman how to love her husband and love her children? Is that she has a husband and children? Or before? It's before, I would think. 
this lady did that, she just didn't realize it. I know that because my wife actually moved in to live with her. She took care of the cleaning of the house, going to the grocery store, doing some of those other things she couldn't do. In exchange for a place to stay while she was going to uh, work in the church. Well, my wife confided to me sometime after we got married. She said, you know, this lady came from London. She said, you know, London and I used to sit up all hours. We talked about said this this just so you understand when I say everything I mean everything so here's this brand new Christian who came out of Catholicism she obeyed the gospel we were dating pretty seriously talking about getting married some of her family members didn't want that to happen because the church, not a member of what they were used to. And so they talked about that. We talked to her about what it meant to be a, a wife and a mother from a Christian standpoint. Duties and obligations, benefits and blessings. My wife was in the social work program. She heard me say she probably had a about how a Christian could function in this world. Lunda, who had no college education, was able to help the Lord bring people to that opportunity. Now, question, you know good to God? A lot of good to God. It probably helped my wife stay a Christian, stay faithful. Helped her with answering some of those difficult questions she was faced with. Second thing that happened, she had a lady move in next door. And you know the way folks used to do, they'd sit down on the front porch and they'd talk to the neighbor. Well, London would do that. She'd talk to this lady, invite her over for coffee, they'd sit over, they'd talk. The lady said, you know, I would love to put up vegetables, but I don't know how. I don't have the equipment. London said, I've got the know how and the equipment. I just can't pick it and do a lot of the physical work. I'll show you how. Well, what do women do when they're sitting around the kitchen? They talk about this. What do they talk about? One of the things they talked about was the Lord and church. They started asking questions. God didn't really answer the questions. But he introduced her to an elder who had a Bible study with her. She obeyed the gospel. So was she good to God? Absolutely. She didn't think she was. But I want to suggest to you that even with her need for somebody else to help her, was still serving God because he was giving people an opportunity to serve. You remember when Paul tells us in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe, that Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Wise old man in the church years ago looked at me one day and said, You know, in order for somebody to be able to give and receive that blessing, somebody has to be willing to receive it. So even sometimes when we allow someone to do something for us or to give us something, we're serving the Lord because we're allowing that other person to have opportunity to be able to help us. So don't ever think that you don't have any Talent and gift and the ability to do what you do, you just might have to think about what it is. It might not be obvious on the surface. But then again, you might be somebody who has multiple talents. Remember the parable of the talents. One person got five, one person got two, one person got the one talent sent away. Why was he sent away? Because he had one talent. See, the thing was, we're told at the beginning of that parable, when the master started handing them out and giving instructions, he did so based on the person's ability to use what they were given. So 
So God didn't expect him to produce what the five talents or the two talents. He just expected him to use what he had in the best way possible. That's one thing about the body. Everybody has a place. <coughs> Everybody has a purpose. Everyone has something that they can do. Think about it. You might need to talk to somebody else about it. You might need to try and do something. Oh, by the way, when I said something, I meant something certain. Just to let everybody know. We don't want to be So, uh, some people absolutely cannot come up with something in here. The thought of standing here doing what I'm doing Some people can't get the credit. Okay. Some people never have an opportunity to start to get somebody else. My father in law said, hey, everybody. Do this, and I did it, and I went all the way from the house to the crowd. And myself, and caught up and said, Man. So, if you're trying to do something that doesn't fit, that's fine. That's not what you're supposed to do. Maybe you're an elbow instead of a right hand. Nothing wrong with that. The Apostle Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians that every We all have something to do. People are watching the clock better than me. I want to get to this. Okay, so I can preach in different places. I've been preaching in Greensboro quite a bit and started. Well, I've got a little bit of time. Yeah, it's off just a little bit. One time I preached for a church and had the clock back here. That made no sense to me unless they were trying to say, we're not worried about this. I don't think that was their point. Anyway, all right, so second thing. Like you're trying to do something. Somehow the thumb jumped in the way of the hand. How'd you react? Pull that thumb back and look at it and say, you know, that was probably one of the dumbest things. First of all, it probably wasn't the thumb fault, was it? It's the it was the right hand that was supposed to do so much better. It got off track. Point number two, we don't scold the thumb, we don't we don't scold the right hand. We start doing everything we can do to make it feel better. Previous life, back before I was a Christian, I worked in the Dodge County for about 20 years. So I worked in the police department. I was a story old criminal officer. Every once in a while, I'd hit my thumb. I'm not the only one. Everybody else did. And every time that happened, people would grab that thumb, they'd start dancing around the roof, and they'd come to me. Did everything that I watched one fella took that thumb and actually put it in his Try and make it feel better. And the whole body was sympathetic, right? Every part of the body was focused on that thumb, trying to help it feel better. In the church, when one of the members in the body of the church has a problem, do what we 
know what to do. And if I don't have a guilty conscience, I think I can do it. I remember my very first Couple lost their son about 31 years old, single, had not been a faithful Christian for many years, died in a single car accident. I knew I was supposed to go visit him. I went. I don't think I said two words. But when I finally left, they left me on my left toe tip In fact, I can't do it anymore. That was Joe Sometimes it's better if we don't. Sometimes people get angry with God because we haven't done what we need to do. They think they have guilt that it isn't perfect. So just let it talk. Later, we'll talk about it. They might ask questions they don't really want to answer. And they have But we need to notice, if we can, because some people don't like to let you know. But they still need to know that we're going to be with them. Prayers, something like that. Something to make them feel that we care about them. This lady told the story of somebody who went to church and had a death in the family. She just showed up. Later, she went and looked at that basket and she was very Somebody else did something similar and she was much more It helps us to live this life. We're all part of the same body. We're all trying to accomplish the same thing. Go home today. I'd like to suggest you think about the place your body is at. What did you need to do? What you might be able to encourage somebody else to do because they can't do it. I talked about that fellow that can't stand up here and do what I'm doing. A lot of people think that. A few people have been encouraged to try and found out after a few tries they got better. I don't want to discourage anybody. But think about it. And then think about your fellow church members. Pray for them. Just try to notice. Maybe they can do something for you. Help you develop Christian faith. I don't think you can like it. That's fine. That's really fine. not a part of this body, it's a pretty simple procedure. You need to believe in Christ as the risen Son of God. You need to confess your sin. That is, you need to make a change. Think and not be the one that controls your life. Let the Lord so live again. Confess Him as your Lord. That means that He's the one who's in charge. And then be buried with Him by baptism into His death. That is, you walk in the new life. A new way of living new way of living is a proper relationship with God. Subject. 